Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are going to discuss planetary aspects today. And this is also one of the most ignored topics in the astrology community, unfortunately. But it's very important. Planetary aspects are very, 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 very important. We cannot just neglect them or wish them out because they are just aspects. All right, so aspects, as Parashara calls them, as drishti, drishti. Okay, planets aspect each other. And therefore, today we'll try to see what are the factors which determine what kind of results you will get when a particular planet is being aspected by another planet or when a particular planet is aspecting another planet, all right, or in any other house or the ascendant or sun, moon, all right. So these are very important things which we should try to use when we do consultations especially and when we look at our own charts also. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And recently, I just, uh, the channel reached 6 million views. So thank you to each one of you who have made this possible so far. And recently, also, it reached 40,000 subscribers. So thanks to each one of you who have been watching the videos. I could not make a video separately, so I'm doing it here. Okay, and if you want a consultation from me regarding your planetary aspects, then you could always go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you must find him. Okay, so let's do some revision, some homework, some nursery stuff. <laughs> Which planets aspect? Which houses? Which signs? Yes, let's do some homework. Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus. These four planets. The, the seventh house from where, wherever they are sitting. That is where they are aspecting. And then we have Saturn. Saturn aspects the third, seventh and the tenth. And then we have Mars. Mars aspects the 4th, 7th and the 8th house. <laughs> and then we have Jupiter which aspects the 5th and the ninth also apart from the 7th. What about Rahu? Rahu is, Rahu is very special in this regard because Rahu aspects the 5th and the ninth, apart from the 7th. But they also say that Rahu aspects the 12th house also from where he is sitting. And because he is retrograde, so it is actually the second house from where he is sitting. Okay, so suppose you have Rahu in second house, then 12th house from that uh, is actually the Lagna, but because it is retrograde, so it is the third house. So you can say technically Rahu aspects the second house. And Ketu, in my knowledge, in my experience, I have seen it, it does not aspect any planet or any house because it does not have a head. And Rahu Ketu are very special planets. They give results of the planets which aspect them. Should I repeat? They give results of the planets which aspect them. All right. So today, let us try to understand what are aspects. See, basically, why did you ever think why? Why is every planet aspecting the seventh house from itself? Why? Why, why is that nobody or why is it that not all the planets aspect the third house or the fourth house or the fifth house or the sixth or the eighth or the ninth or tenth or eleventh or twelfth? What is so special in that seventh house? For every planet you see, irrespective of the planet, seventh aspect is always there, whichever planet you take. Why? Oh, Parashara has said, so let us just take it. You know. No, it doesn't work like that. Everything in astrology has a scientific principle because astrology is a science. Many times people think that 
they will go to an astrologer and some some devata some god or somebody you know some fancy entity will come and they will you know tell them and then they will be like oh ah, I'm malum hai. i know he has spoken it to me now i will tell it it doesn't work like that that's sheer nonsense actually all right so astrology is like just another science physics chemistry maths biology so why seventh house why not any other house you have to understand this fundamental principle of astrology because the seventh house deals with desire so what's so special about desire well every planet be it sun moon or venus or saturn mars rahu ketu whoever is a manifestation of us some parts of our consciousness and in this material world the soul is taking birth again and again and again and again because of desire so therefore planets are not only interested in the house which they are sitting in they are also interested in what is going in front of them which is directly seven houses apart they are interested in the farthest house because the seventh house is the farthest if you go from this side or that side it is the farthest so therefore the living being as the shrimad bhagavatam says bhagavad gita says you know when the living being is uh, pure in the spiritual realm it is known as chit the chit means sat chit anand the pure consciousness the soul is only happy in uniting and delighting with god and nobody else but then when the living being wants to be independent from god then the living being comes to this material world and then that pure chit becomes chitta which is consciousness that is directed towards matter which means then the soul starts feeling that oh i have to be in a particular body then i have to enjoy this body you know in in a dog's body i have to enjoy another you know female dog you know in a in a human's body in a man's body i have to enjoy with a woman you know in a woman's body i have to enjoy with a man you know, these kind of things the the soul miss ident that's like a misconception that the soul undergoes and that is why every part of the soul or the soul altogether is looking for fulfilling some desire that is why every planet aspects the seventh house from wherever it is sitting it may aspect the other houses but the seventh aspect is the most prominent aspect so what does it mean when you say that a planet is aspecting a particular house what does it mean it means suppose a planet is sitting uh, in the in the ascendant all right so it will always aspect the seventh house from the ascendant so what does this mean so it means that the lagna the planet in the lagna which is the ascendant the first house your you know identity the way you look the way you appear the way you present yourself that is wanting to show itself to the other people which is seventh house that planet is trying to seek validation from the seventh house that is why you will see when a planet is in lagna and the dasha gets activated even if it is a planet like jupiter i have seen people you know they are if it's venus especially mercury or venus you know people become very conscious about their appearance why because now they are becoming very much concerned about how other people are viewing them which is the seventh house now they are not concerned with themselves they are concerned with how i am looking in front of others because the seventh house deals with anybody not only your spouse your husband wife anybody anybody who is in front of you that person can be a criminal or a priest a lawyer or a animal or anybody so therefore the seventh house is very important the seventh aspect okay so now one thing that we do not understand when we consider um, 
aspects is the houses which the planet lords these houses are very important whenever it comes to aspects so for example if you take the example of a taurus ascendant taurus lagna saturn is a yoga karak because he lords the most powerful of the kendra and trikona among the trikonas ninth house is the most powerful and among the kendras the 10th house is unanimously the most powerful so he lords both of these two houses for taurus that is why he's a yoga karaka yoga karaka means one who adds to the chart one who adds value to the horoscope in fact sometimes i have seen saturn is thousand times more important than even venus when it comes to a taurus lagna because the yoga karak can do certain things which even the lagnesh cannot dream to even achieve <laughs> what to speak of achieving you know because the lagnesh is helpless and powerless without the trines and the kendra lords so therefore if the lagnesh is not well placed for a taurus lagna i always check where saturn is placed the yoga karaka has the power to save the chart okay so now imagine for taurus this saturn rules the kendra and the trikona and now suppose this this powerful saturn of course the power will depend on where he is placed also okay so suppose he is placed in the 10th house itself in aquarius so it is forming a very powerful mahapurush yoga known as sasha mahapurush yoga so from that what what does uh, what does he do from the 10th house he will aspect the 12th house because third from the 10th is the 12th then he aspects the 4th and the 7th from the lag nine okay these are the houses which saturn will aspect so now what does this mean that the yoga karaka who is, who is in a very powerful dignity although his saturn somehow <laughs> he is still aspecting these three houses what does this mean it means that the traits of the ninth house and the 10th house will be very prominently visible in these three houses because now as i said before the soul is desiring these houses but now the now the thing is everybody may desire to what extent the desire will be fulfilled that will depend on what is your power so imagine like this suppose you like uh, to have a mercedes yeah? so now you go in front of a mercedes uh, show yes and then you see oh mercedes cla mercedes s class mercedes this that a b c d so what are, what you are doing you are standing outside so that is like the placement of the planet and you are seeing that car which is in inside the show so that is like the aspect you are aspecting mercedes <laughs> but will you be able to buy that car 30 40 lakhs 50 lakhs 1 crore 50000 usd 30000 usd how much ever the price is that will be decided on how much money is there with you in your pocket in your card in your bank <laughs> so a planet's aspect is strong or weak depending on the placement of the planet so which means the aspect of an exalted planet is very powerful it means the desire is so great that the planet will do anything to achieve that have you seen because the planet is exalted it's a great dignity it's fully aware so that is what i have seen sometimes any exalted planet aspecting the 7000 dasha gets active bang on they become crazy for marriage they go literally mad i have seen i have seen charts with jupiter in third or you know in lagna with or in 11th exalted jupiter in karka cancer no reason why dasha gets active oh i want to get married suddenly what happened because now from the third first and the 11th 
guru is aspecting the seventh house so now the desire to fulfill that which the seventh house represents which is marriage is becoming more and more and more and more prominent in fact but but here here here's the fun you know? <laughs> the desire is there but will the desire be fulfilled how will it be fulfilled so suppose jupiter is in the third exalted that means again you are a, a taurus lagna you know? because for taurus cancer is in the third house so then from there he's aspecting as an exalted planet he's aspecting the seventh house so then the desire for getting married can become very strong but then now jupiter will see so whenever the moment you go to the mercedes showroom and you see wow this car is very beautiful then what do you think immediately oh how much money do i have right so you will look at your pocket you will see i have 20000 usd 30000 usd 40000 usd how much you have so depending on that you will think is it realistic to expect this car or this uh, this fancy home or whatever so now jupiter in the third house being exalted aspecting the seventh house of you know for a taurus lagna scorpio seventh house jupiter will now look into the third house Jupiter will start communicating with all the acquaintances. Third house shows acquaintances. Hi, hello, I am fine. Thank you. You good night. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Yes, Jupiter will start finding through acquaintances. Is there any way by which I can get married? How is there somebody in my contact list? Third house is the contact list. can somebody help me find my future spouse how or can some of my friends you know friends are also third house close friends are the 11th house and because it's jupiter sitting there he will not just uh, go and just uh, find anybody jupiter is very uh, particular about things you know so he he will not just settle with somebody you know he he wants good people so that is how you see so the the pocket the money that you have is like the placement and the the house and the sign represents how strong is your desire now suppose this same jupiter is aspecting from capricorn yes yes uh, <laughs> but the desire is not there even if it is there it's like okay if i get married it's fine if i don't then life still go that that craziness that obsession that madness is not there of course uh, exalted planet does not make you mad it makes you very aware if rahu aspects that then it becomes an obsession jupiter in third or 11th lagna afflicted by rahu oh my god mad about marriage 24 hours especially in dasha i have seen my god bang on crazy now there is nothing wrong but i am just trying to explain how the things can vary yes so now coming back to the old example for saturn for a taurus lagna in the 10th house forming mahapurush yoga as the yoga karak aspecting again the 7th house and the 4th house and the 12th house so these people the moment they will go uh, suppose you know uh, mars dasha gets active mars is the 12th lord and mars is also the 7th lord yes so then immediately their spiritual life booms i have seen after marriage you know they their spiritual life may kick off not for any taurus if they have this placement provided and then fourth house also anything to do with the mother these things can become very active and they may want to do something very concrete in matter of spirituality because saturn is also the 10th lord he is not only the 9th lord of spirituality he is also the 10th lord so that that is how you analyze you know how uh, how aspects can be studied how aspects should be studied you know? 
and now because saturn is in aquarius it is in mool trikon sign the desire is very strong 12th house very strong desire 4th house 7th house very 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 strong desire and then what's in the pocket yes the pocket is also very big a lot of money is there so it's like a billion dollars <laughs> mool trikon my god that to the ninth lord and the tenth lord these are insane crazy placements very good placements to have yes yeah, so this is how you have to know and especially the houses where your lagna lord is aspecting is very 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 important in this life this can give you a clue of what are the things that you were searching in your past life and these are the these are also the things which can give you a clue of what you will be searching in this life what are the things that could help you or break you yes so for example i have seen as they say you know venus ketu conjunction is a very difficult conjunction why do they say that do you ever think because when venus and ketu are together rahu is exactly opposite of venus my god running running behind the opposite sex like dogs now it is maybe even the same sex running behind pleasure you know venus is uh, this uh, anything which is very soft you know drinks exotic drinks <laughs> not wine wine is different venus represents the exotic drinks you know nice drinks very fine drinks running behind all this like mad like like animals like dogs like crazy people yes and what happens when you were running more and more and more you become more and more headless so that's what happens to venus ke to sometimes if venus is very badly placed by sign or by house so now if you have this conjunction and if you are not like this so don't so don't freak out and you don't have to worry you know this is just a statement that i have made this is a very broad generalization in fact that is why i have seen venus and rahu's conjunction is even less worse than venus ketu conjunction when it comes to running behind materialistic pleasure why because when venus and rahu are together ketu is opposite so venus is aspecting this ketu yes but when venus and ketu are conjunct venus is uh, so, sorry rahu is aspecting venus no? so therefore this is how the conjunctions have to be studied this is how you have to know what happens when certain planets aspect so for example let's take the uh, case of sun wherever sun is sitting and wherever it is aspecting you know the seventh house which sun aspects from its place that that is one place that house which will always question your authority that can either increase or decrease your name fame status power position authority in this world why because that is the house which the sun is very much interested in conquering sun represents you know kings kings like to conquer lands yes so imagine there is a good planet there good planet means for example if there is you know jupiter or moon for example then it's there is a great placement because then it is like saying the the king wants to conquer good things jupiter sun 17 axis best placement to have 17 means not first and seven anywhere 39 or 410 or 612 28 any any 17 axis one of the best things to have why because now the king finds lot of value in that jupiter the king wants to go and conquer jupiter is the best thing any planet in 7 from jupiter the best planet <laughs> because that planet will always strive to become better even more than any planet being conjunct with jupiter if a planet is conjunct with jupiter it shows that the level of sattva gun is already very high which is also very good there's no doubt but at a practical level when you are uh, seeing charts 
then if you see that there is a planet 7 from Jupiter it's very good because that planet just is admiring Jupiter like anything imagine you are standing in front of that showroom and you are admiring this beautiful car all right <laughs> So that is, that is why aspects are very important. So the, the next time you, you know, see any planet is aspecting the ascendant or ascendant lord, you, you must take these things into consideration when you are doing consultations. Okay. And of course, Gemini talks of, you know, Rashi Drishti. So the ones which we talked was Graha Drishti. And what is Rashi Drishti? Rashi Drishti means the zodiac signs also aspect okay so uh, the planets which are sitting in certain zodiac signs will aspect the rashi's aspect actually through the planets so for example they say the movable signs they will aspect the other fixed signs except the one next to it and same is true the other way around hmm? And the uh, movable fix, and then the dual signs aspect the other dual signs, apart from themselves, of course. <laughs> so we will discuss more on Rashi Drishti, Graha Drishti, difference of these two. They're very important, actually. And that is why, if you see, uh, the aspects were given very much importance before uh, if, even now unfortunately they are not given much importance but before when they used to see horoscopes in the ancient days in india they, they used to consider them like crazy why because they are very important and lastly the degrees are also very important very 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 important so as I said, suppose Jupiter and Venus are aspecting each other, but Venus is at 1 degree and Guru is at, you know, 29 degrees. It's of no use. Because now, although it's like, you know, imagine you are calling somebody and the person picks your phone, but the connection is so bad, it's so weak that you can't hear. So it is as good as if uh, you, you could not call the person. You know, it's like that. So many times I see, and yes, Saturn's aspects. Saturn's aspects are also very important because they can show where our pending karma is. Why? Because it is like saying suffering is interested in these areas. Because Saturn is suffering in one word. Anything that you don't want or you don't like or that you prefer to stay away from that is Saturn and when Saturn is aspecting something so it's like saying the desire to uh, so it's like saying you know you you have a very strong desire or life will make you make your situations in such a way that you will prefer to stay away from it and that is why the famous aspect of Saturn and Venus always I have seen Saturn and Venus or Saturn aspecting Venus so what does it mean when Saturn aspects Venus it is like saying Venus has given you so much suffering that you prefer to stay away from it that's a very pe peculiar situation you know Venus is the planet of pleasure but it has given you so much suffering uh, people when Saturn Venus are together or Saturn aspects Venus they say that Saturn is, you know, troubling Venus. No, Saturn is not troubling Venus. Venus, Venus is, you know, actually troubling the horoscope and that gives you so much pain because that's there in your karma. That is how the karma is designed. That now it Saturn feels as if I'm expecting that. That means I have a very strong desire to not go towards relationships. Because whenever I go, either I get cheated or the person rejects me outwardly or the person um, doesn't agree to anything that I say, the person doesn't want me, the person, you know, dejects me or anything it can be depend on, depending on the chart. So therefore, Saturn has now decided, Venus is one planet that I will stay away from. Now, what if this Saturn is the yoga karak for you? 
which means either you are a uh, Taurus Lagna or a Libra Lagna. Okay? Then this is very good for your spiritual progress. As an example, I'm saying, because then now, by doing that, by staying away from that so-called uh, afflicted Venus, your spiritual progress will boom. Yes. And therefore, you should always check where, which are the planets or houses that your trine and lords, the lords of your trines, five and nine, they are expecting, they can give you great clues about spiritual progress, great clues. All right. So I can keep speaking on every conjunction and every aspect like this. And uh, every aspect has a different meaning. So for example, Saturn aspects, the third, seventh and the tenth. So they were different meaning, Mars, four, seven, eight, different meaning. So we will hopefully discuss these things in the future, God willing. And until next time, thank you very much for your patience. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your planetary aspects, then you can always go to my description section to my website down there. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And yes, if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel and share this video with your family members, loved ones. And if you like this, click the thumbs up. Thank you so much.